double time, let's say 164 hour times 6 hours comes out to be a total of 259,172. The travel mileage there estimated is 70 miles twice a day, 92 cents a mile. That comes out to be about $128.80 per round trip. Their estimate does not include any alarms that would occur at that treatment plant. They're billed at $125 per hour. <coughs> per hour. The four-hour day coverage in a plant, and there's two hours of travel time. That's why we came up with the six hours. The four hours is required. The two hours is the travel time. The town employee numbers reflect eight hours per day of work time. So what we did, David, came up with a scenario which I have on the second page of, I have some explanation of this as we go along, the indirect costs and the direct costs, if David wants to pick up on that or if you want me to continue, I will. Do you need him to go through this little detail? It's up to us. Do we want to continue it? Or you want to? Yeah, I, mean, I think I'm, we have a clear cut. Right, I mean, I, I, again, I'm the one that, right. that I had asked and I appreciate the work you did because it makes it Oh, We're still clear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't feel the need. I understand completely okay. what you did, and it makes good sense. The so only one question I have is, is there someone else that's more local that would be? No, we have had good luck with them. We used them in the past. Uh, they have ran the plant for us in 2007 when we started up for a while, and we had other issues over the years. So. They're the guys to go to, as they say, they have the best knowledge of the system, of the plant itself. Let's get our rehab you know, what, what Guilford had said, why aren't we looking at a younger, on an inexperienced person to bring in? And obviously, these people can help in the training of them. Mm -hmm. And we well, won't be paying $30 an hour for somebody that's going to want to work and learn and Yep, that's what and we're, create a position for their career, you know? That's what we're trying to shoot for. As you know, John and I know, if you get a license, it's an operator and training license. Uh, exactly. And it takes two years to get a full license. How many years have you been here? Too many. I've been here 34 and I'm still learning, okay? <laughs> I've been here 41 and I'm still learning. Okay, so it never ends. No. So I mean that is a I mean that is a, a course of action, but we still would end up paying small waters while we're bringing the person on. Yeah. Correct. So Plus somebody to train. At, at right. this point, it's going to cost us a lot of money to run that treatment plant, no matter how we look at it. And yeah. You understand the situation the water and the wastewater is in right now, mm -hmm. with with the age of the workforce mm -hmm. and those two careers. It's, I've been to seminars and other things. They're getting this stuff into high schools, into the science classes, into the labs, trying to get some of the students involved in, in running the water and the wastewater from town to keep some of these citizens in town and working and, and, and in a career. And I think there's a lot of options out there that we need to look at. Mr. Nyhart? You went through advertisement already and got a number of people. What was the primary reason that we couldn't hire these people? Was it because the salary was set lower, or was it was there incentives that could have brought them in, or is it just that there's not enough of those professionals <coughs> in the area that we can? There's just not enough of operators right now. They well, all that, that does is, is increase the yeah. salaries, but. You know, there had to be some reason these guys would There's over 10,000 uh, water and wastewater operators right now that are retiring per year, I believe, was the last article I read. I wasn't not. Is it? Yes. You there got is, that? There's a tremendous amount of them, yes. We have one. So actually, let me, sum, uh, let me summarize what I think is one of our other issues is that in the water industry, <laughs> you have the inside guys and you have the outside guys. And so the distribution guys tend to be outside guys, and the treatment guys tend to be inside guys. And if you're a really good treatment guy, you don't want to do the outside stuff. So that's the other thing where if you get somebody with a license and has been through the, been through the process already, they're usually plant-oriented, and they like being the plant guys. And, and they're kind of the bookworms of the water industry. 
Well, looking at the prices that we're going to have to pay to run this plant, wouldn't it have been better just to hire the two people, the one outside and one inside, at whatever price we can get? Because this is going to. I think this really is we crazy. are going to have to go back to the drawing board and start yeah. looking at how this is going to work. We're going to have to redraft this. You know, if people are coming from a job that's an experienced job, and we're not offering you know a vacation time uh, the day they start working for us, we need to relook at that. And you look at the kids that are but coming I'm, out; they're looking at four weeks yeah. right you can't on help the spot. They're a union type. They're a union job. But then, and, and you're not, not you've got a contract going here, so you know. And not every place you go to offers you a whole lot of vacation in your first six months, regardless of how much experience you have. Exactly. So they just they just didn't want to give up their vacation they had accrued. And so I mean, July and August ain't a great time to try to hire people and get yeah, rid of them not, and take their vacation away. Yeah, it's not good to do. <laughs> yeah, maybe that is a problem. A lot of them, and, I, and I know in the past, I've seen it in the past too, is some people just apply for these positions and go back to where they're working and say, well, look at what they offered me. So what's going, what's, how, how's this going to work out? But the reality too is that we also have, you know, that they don't know who they're going to be reporting to. And that's a bit unsettling for somebody applying for a job. So I think, and, you know, it's very possible until we have the leadership resolved. Yeah. Yeah. So, any other discussion about this? No. We have the So for my wrap up, for all those younger people at home listening to this, <laughs> if you're looking for a job and you're not having any luck, water and wastewater industry is looking for people. We're always, we've been looking for people for the last five, six years, so. Pays I, good. I, I believe we only had two or three students in the wastewater over 34 years I've been that were, were into it, and I think only one has moved on, got his license, and he's assistant <laughs> operator at a plant. Right there. It's okay. a lot of responsibilities okay. with these yeah. jobs. All right, so we're going to jump to uh, new item number two, if you don't mind. So the Campus and Community Coalition billboard design. She's patiently sat through us. <laughs> So. Very entertaining. Very entertaining. Do I need to stand? Well, just tell us what you know. You don't need to okay. stand. Um, that's only for liquor licenses. Okay. That, yeah, that's what I thought. So, um, so my name is Sally Lenowski, and I'm the Associate Dean of Students uh, for Off-Campus Student Life at UMass, and one of the founding members of the Campus and Community Coalition. And I'm here tonight to, uh, to share with you an idea that we're very excited about. Um, the Campus Community Coalition was started in 2005. Hadley has been a founding member of that coalition. Mr. Devine and Mr. Nixon have been involved, and we, the, the work of the coalition is bringing together partnerships to reduce dangerous drinking. Um, it's not restricted only to UMass students, although that has been a primary focus. We're looking at factors in the environment, such as retail outlet density, um, enforcement of laws, um, what are best practices from other cities and towns, and having meaningful educational prevention messages. So one of the um, new collaborations that we've been able to form with the coalition is with Williams Distributing. Williams Distributor is the liquor distributor for all of our area, and they also have the contract for the gateway billboard, I will call it, to our town. Interesting that we were talking about gateways tonight and a liquor store proposed at the gateway. That's another topic. But um, that billboard has been a product promotion for Budweiser products um, for the last 25 years. Williams Distributing has partnered with us and is agreeing to do a prevention message, which is less of a product promotion, but one more speaking to collaboration and working together um, to prevent underage and dangerous drinking. So the message is one not of anti-drinking, it's not one of adults can't drink, and it's not one of not drinking responsibly. It's more about how we can work together as communities, as police, as administrators of the university, as parents, as educators, as municipal bodies, to send a message in our community about what's acceptable and what's safe and what's reasonable. So um, I have some materials um, about the coalition that I can share with the select board. Um, a little bit of our history and some of our successful outcomes. And I have some mock-ups of billboard design. The idea, um, there's four, none of these are final. The idea is that it will have a, a sort of a primary message of working together to prevent underage and dangerous drinking. 
with the town seals. Uh, the town of Amherst is already on board. We're hoping that the town of Hadley will be on board. Spiffy, which is our youth prevention coalition in Hampshire County, is actively engaged. You may know them. They've been doing the billboards about social norming and parents wanting to know where their kids are and not hosting parties with alcohol. Spiffy is on board and it's an initiative of the coalition. So the billboard um, proposed would be for October, the month of October. Williams is giving it to us uh, for no cost. We're going to bear the cost of printing. And then we'll get a second message in April. We see this as a great opportunity to, as people enter the gateway to sort of what I consider the five college area, I'm a Hadley resident, and it just bothers me that the first thing you see when you drive over Hadley, aside from the Getty Station, is an alcohol ad. This will still be an alcohol industry owned billboard, but with a public surf surf, uh, service message. So we're asking for your support um, in that, and I'm happy to take any questions and I can share the, the drafts. Um, where, where exactly is this billboard? It is the one right over the Coolidge Bridge that's brightly lit. Right near it backs up to the Welcome to Hadley. Oh, sort on of that side. So yeah, it's on that side. As you're going to Northampton. No, you no, see no. it as you come into Hadley. Oh, you come into Hadley. You, as you come right over the bridge, it's on the left, and it's lit up. Usually has a beer bottle. Yeah, it's always an alcohol ad. Right now, it's shock top. You're probably looking at that pride station when you come by. I just can't see yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I it all this is, is this a partial? Is that half of it and, and Williams will do the rest of it? Or will the entire billboard be this? The entire billboard will really? be this. And there will be these sort of the, the agencies that sign on or the municipalities. And Williams has asked, you know, to have their little thing, but it's not going to be by Williams distributing. They're going to be sort of branded as an equal partner. Stay up for a month, the month of October? Yep, the month, the month of October. And then in April, um, they've given us permission. Of course, they will have you know, opportunity to give input onto the message. So far, Mr. Frasco has seen these. He likes the look um, and likes the theme of it. So if I have permission, yeah, I can ahead. bring those up. You're being set up to fail, by the way. Blarney blog happens in March. You don't want to do it like that. <laughs> he wouldn't give us March. You don't give him the month after. He wouldn't give us March because of the March Madness. However, April is a peak month, too. Yeah, okay. The way the weather's going lately, anyways. Yeah, yeah. So um, we have one issue, I believe, yes. with this. And that is, we came for the town seal. Yeah, we're going to have yep. to talk to the uh, town clerk about the use of the town seal, but maybe mm -hmm. there's some other logo that we can use uh, mm -hmm. to signify heavily. Why? Uh, there are certain restrictions by state law on the use of the town seal for non official business. So Amherst can, but we can't? Uh, well, their town clerk works to the town manager. <laughs> Our town clerk's well, not I think we just need to ask the town clerk for permission to use it on the sign. Yeah, we just we just need to, to make mm -hmm. reach clarity on this issue. Mm -hmm. So I think we all know the town clerk quite well. <laughs> so uh, we could all go. speak to her probably. Okay. What what is the square? There's nothing in the square. Those one. are those are sort of placeholders. <laughs> so so one is Williams. One would be Spiffy. We have she didn't add the logo on there, so they're just sort of placeholders. They're sort of rough drafts there. And then UMass is just going with the yes. website. Yeah, so the so we're gonna do the UMass EDU um, CCC, directing people to the Campus Community Coalition website, which we're in the process of updating and putting lots more information on there. Sort of a call to action. Mm -hmm. Chief, you want to take a look at it? You guys see it? I haven't actually seen that that one. Just so the board's aware, um, sure. Sally and I met the other day. Um, we are, uh, she told us a little bit about what they do over at UMass as far as, um, you know, assisting the police department with, uh, you know, underage, problem with underage drinking, party houses and things like that. And uh, we're in with both feet um, with what, you know, all the ideas that they have and the work that they're doing over there. So um, that's our stance. Our membership in the Campus and Community Coalition has been very, very productive for the town of Hadley. And it's gone a long way towards uh, improving the quality of life in the neighborhoods. We've been able to use the tools from the from the coalition and from our, our work with the coalition to reduce a lot of the uh, party houses that we used to plague this uh, town 10 years ago. The only comment I would have is about that it was a great idea, the, the design. 
might yeah. not want to go with all the people because people tend to kind of look to see if they recognize yeah. anybody. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah it's, it's interesting because we had a designer work on it. So one was sort of the landscape view, oh, like and one was sort of, the, I think there's one that's a downtown view. It looks like it's sort of outside, outside of Antonio's Pizza. Yeah. And then one is sort of the campus looking north, I think. And I'm like, oh, we should have it. the campus would be east, <laughs> you know, right. if we're asked, asking Hadley. So yeah. um, I think the design is, the idea is we wanted the working together to be key and have it not look completely like it's UMass, because it's not just UMass. We're all in this work together, and we realize if you tighten the balloon on one end, it pops out somewhere else. So. Well, maybe, maybe the first one has mostly campus and Amherst, and the next one has Hadley and the campus. Maybe. There you go. Yeah. We're willing to share. <laughs> I make a motion we support this effort. Second. With the understanding that we need to talk to the clerk mm -hmm. about Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thanks. I want to say, too, that you're very cooperative, too, with, with Cooley Dickinson and uh, our emergency room and what goes on. And there's been good communication the last few years, too. Yeah, we, we've really, we really turned things in a very positive direction. It's gotten out of control with, with young adults today. and. Um, you know they're all going to try to experiment with, mm -hmm. with alcohol. I think they think that's what going to college is all about. But when they start mixing drugs with the alcohol, it becomes disastrous. Opioid thing is crazy. And it's just, you know, that's become really rampant in this area. And I think the more awareness that you know, people have that mm -hmm. you can't mix the two, that it's, it's deadly. Absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. So. Okay. All right, so we'll get back kind of on track here. So Mass DOT wants us to sign the planting agreement. Um, I, I reached out to the Historical Commission, and they have some problems with, I think, the overall roadway design, which I don't think we can actually resolve. Um, but they, never, they didn't con I didn't get a comment back from Ginger uh, about the plantings. So I, I don't think we're really ready to sign it. So we'll just put it on the next agenda. And apologize to Mr. Massey and say we're still trying to get our ducks in order here. If that's okay. What don't we have in order? So, there's some design issues that have not been resolved. I think I think the historical commission is saying that the design is a, a, not what they expected to see, but she hasn't gotten back to me about the specifics yet. So, and then, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind some big urns there that you can plant in, you know, um, that type of thing. But to just have flowers and things, which I don't know if anybody has the time to take care of them. I mean, that's the whole issue with doing That's not a design issue, though. No. No. Well, it's part of the design, though. I think you're talking about plantings. design of the roads. They have a road design issue, I think. Oh, they have a road design. Well, I have a problem with the planting because of how they do what they want. I know where we get some urns. You do? There's a whole bunch of UMass. They have some really nice ones, though. So we're deferring this? Yes, if everybody's okay with deferring. Yes. Yeah. All right, so Town Hall Asbestos Project. Okay, so we, uh, uh, so Tim can uh, give an update as to the progress on there, but uh, we had a construction meeting at 2 o'clock today. Still some work that needs to be done with respect to punch list items and mostly the floor, getting that sealed and waxed and, uh, and uh, finishing up on the last minute uh, painting issues there. So right now we're thinking that we're ready to go back next week, the eight, Monday the 18th, Tuesday the 19th, Wednesday the 20th, uh, and we'll work with our vendors to set up that, uh, that move. Uh, and get going in a phased approach. Uh, we have late paperwork that came in finally from this project. The first, there are two change orders. The first one is for two items. The uh, first item would be for the painting, and the amount is twenty-six thousand six forty-seven and fifty cents. And the second item in that change order is uh, to extend the contract by six days, which only brings them up to last Friday the 8th, uh, the 7th rather. So they've already extended beyond the extension yeah. that they're asking for tonight. We've been after them to get this uh, change order to us for a very long time 
and it only came through just yesterday. I got $24,225. Right, there's a markup uh, for the uh, uh, overhead, so that's, that's so what's, the difference. There's what's a calculation. 26, what does it do? 26, 6, 4, 7, and 50 cent. So that's the first change order. The second change order is for some additional linoleum. Before we started this project, we did some test borings to, uh, throughout the building to find out if we had asbestos in places where we wouldn't expect it and to try to determine the extent of that asbestos. When they were doing the asbestos abatement, they found an area of the floor on the first floor in the hallway that had linoleum that had uh, asbestos within it that um, uh, was beyond what we thought. So they've asked for a change order, $1,021.28. I recommend both these change orders. We're still within the project budget. Uh, I've budgeted $9,000 for moving expenses. It looks like we're going to be somewhere closer to 2000 but even counting it at 9000 we're going to have a balance of about $9,000 at the end of this project. So we can afford these two change orders. Do we have a copy of that second change order? Yes, it should be in front of you. In the book? I got three $24,225. Yeah, I a bunch of those. I think uh, there's only two copies of the first one. There's only the first one. I, I got three copies. You got three also. Well, that was a thousand dollars, you said, David. This is the thousand dollar one, yes. Tim, do you have any comments? No, I think you said most everything. Yes, certainly we are. Um, we're going to watch over them quite closely. They know of our concerns with regard to the date we said. It cannot move another day. Uh, so we've got all our vendors lined up to get in on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we're going to have um, some of the furniture brought in from Russell School on uh, Monday. We're going to make sure that everybody, and we have some actually in uh, the senior center that has to be moved over. We're going to do that on, on Monday, get everything set up. So we should do the most transition with the help of um, uh, the, trial court. the trial court, thank you, uh, to get everything else uh, over there. So, yeah. Uh, Gary and I are going to um, be over there quite a bit for the next couple of days. We are actually going to be there on Saturday to do another punch list item after they are out on Friday. We're very concerned about uh, any other damage that might occur from the, from the moving of the furniture and everything. So we're going to uh, look at it with a fine tooth comb, certainly on uh, Saturday. So I'm going to be calling Tim on Saturday to find out the status of that uh, punch list. If there's any major issues, uh, I've been talking to council and we're prepared to use some of the enforcement mechanisms within the contract to uh, get this thing done. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, you got contact numbers so that you get a better response than you did last weekend from the if they contractor. Would, if we got the contacts. If they, they just don't answer the phones. <laughs> and and what, yeah. was, what was the answer to that? I mean, if you had your meeting today. We're making phone calls to try to get a response, and we're not getting anything. The, the issue is uh, we're dealing with with the contractor and, and two subs. subs that have subs. Yeah. And the problem is that they had to go down the tree to get the sequence and the dates of when things could occur. And it did fall apart, and the uh, general contractor admitted that it was his fault, that uh, communication was his, and it was his responsibility alone, and he didn't follow through properly. He assumed too much that that these gentlemen were in there working, and we called them on it. I said, you never called us and said that so-and-so didn't call. You didn't give us any concerns that this was not happening. And there, he had three, three days last week that he assumed something was happening. And he had his, guy, his, his movers go in on Thursday and Friday. 
and he didn't even check to see if the floors are sealed. He just assumed it. And now he just made more work for himself and a lot of a lot of work for others. So we're going to so see him combat. personally on Thursday and Friday and Saturday so that, that, that he can't pass that buck again on you? Well, we're still concerned about that, um, Jerry, because when we met with him today and we, we voiced our concerns, he got, uh, and after a few people left, he jumped up in his truck and left, and we never saw him. And, and we, and Derek, who is um, from Cardio, we told him that, and he was very concerned. He just shook his head. And he said, maybe, maybe we all should look at it on Saturday to make sure. And, that, and that's a real concern. And like uh, David said, if, if, if these things are not done, that's when we're going to have to. And what are the repercussions? Well, you have uh, liquidated damages at the $1,000 a day. We have material breach of contract, and we have uh, we can make a claim against the surety. Okay. And you got three payments. We got three payments or something. We can hold a final payment on it anyway. Yeah. We are get. I mean, the good thing is he is coming and trying to get things fixed. It's just a sequence of events, and and he is he's an asbestos guy. Yeah. He has these subs that he was hoping were doing a lot of stuff, and it's just all part of it. We're trying, we're getting it done. It's just taking us an immense amount of time. I know because it's, a pain it's, for going, it's just reiterating uh, the same stuff that should have been done before. Okay. Thank he's you. well aware of it now, anyway. So. He's very well aware of our our frustration over this. So, any other questions? No. Thanks for answers. So it looks good. It does look good. It looks real good. I stopped in here make today. Make a motion to do the change orders. To accept both change orders. Both change orders. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So Town I'm paying the dime till it's done. Huh. Town hall roof requisition. The project is now done. Uh, we have a requisition for 72400 which is the entire amount of the contract. Uh, received a notice from the alternate building inspector that the roof has been inspected and has been uh, approved. Uh, we had uh, additional money from an old article uh, devoted to this project as a contingency. We're not going to need to use that contingency, so make a recommendation that we pay the requisition and we return a uh, balance of about $7,200 back to that old article to be used for other town hall related and senior center related uh, repairs. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, just the money, is that available now or do we yes. have to wait and redistribute? No. Okay. Thank you. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The roof looks excellent too. Uh, they did a very good job. Very good job on it. And Gary was um, nice enough to go up in the um, tr boom truck many times to look at it, <laughs> rather than us. Yeah, he went up, took a little video on his phone too. Yes, I see. Yeah. But not, from from further back, you can see the, the their quality of work is there, just like on the other on the senior center. Yeah, yeah they, they did great work. Okay, so. Next, one day liquor license for the Western Mass Climbers Coalition. This is the second year we've been asked to do this. Nobody's here. No, we couldn't attend tonight. So um, we spoke with Chief Spankham today, um, who will go in and have some inspections done before. Um, it's going to be run similar to last year, I guess. But, um, no issues last year. Please. Motion to allow. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We're now on to the policies and procedures update in the police department. Good luck. So, um, I believe uh, Mr. Nixon posted for your access only um, our major bulk of our, our police policies and procedures. Um, one of the, I actually 
started work on those the, the night I shook everyone's hand even before we had settled the contract because it, it was something that was very important to me for our department to move forward. Um, there are, there's a lot, there's several hundred. It, it really, um, with, without the help of uh, some of the officers and Sergeant Cook, um, it, it would have been uh, a very tall task. And I, as I've been telling David over the last few weeks, um, as we were coming close to completion, I kind of shot myself in the foot on this one because I was planning on using that as a goal and objective. Um, obviously, that's, uh, that's out the window now. now. Right. So we are still uh, in, the, in the process of working on the dispatch side of things, the communication side. Um,